Hey guys, this is airbrush artist Ed Beer Jr., also the owner, everyday driver, the Dragon Lord van. We're here at Vanorama 8. I've uh, been a participant and a co-producer of this event for the last eight years. And we're showcasing the Dragon Lord here. And I want to take you on a little bit of a tour and tell you the storyline behind why the subject is what it is and a little bit of my background, which is that I illustrated for games and books like TSRs, Dungeons and Dragons, and Magic the Gathering cards. So I've kind of been in the fantasy market for the last 40 years, and that's why I picked the subject of dragons. So I can take you to start with the very, very top of the visor. Now that the sun has gone out, we'll have a little, uh, little bit of a less glare, I guess. All right, so at the very top, you have the visor, and that you, there you see the Dragon Lord himself. And this is kind of like, um, he's almost like an elemental being. He's both dragon and demon. And he is the, in the very beginning of time, created the very first offsprings of what we know as the fire dragons. So as we move down to the hood, here we see the very first fire dragon. And he, the dragon, is born from the embers and the volcanic lava, if you will, from the earth. And of course, inside and where this domain where he's created, you'll see in the background the fire spirits of all the different elemental creatures and beings and so forth. So in the beginning, we had the fire dragons. So as we go from the front, which is the birth of the fire dragons, we have the elemental dragon, which is basically nothing. This is airbrushed to look like it's really a spirit. It's, it's formed from fire. It's really not an actual physical being. It's just designed so that it looks like it's coming from or creating like a ghostly spirit from the flame work. So that ends the fire side. And then the, the storyline goes that as the earth cooled and went into a deep ice age, the ice dragons emerged. And that's what we have here on the passenger door. And this ice dragon, how they, ru they ruled the earth for several millennium. These were all, of course, very peaceful, content beings. They were intellectual beings. They weren't the beastly type of dragons that we wound up finding out later on. And there was a reason for that. So as the ice age started to warm up and the earth became more water bound and oceans were formed, we went from the ice dragons into the Asiatic water dragons. So this is in the warm up stage. So the earth is now evolving. The oceans are forming. It's no longer a, just a crust of ice. And you have the Asiatic serpentine dragon, so the, the whole body goes under the water, comes up. And I have, of course, tried to capture the style of the, both you know, the Japanese, the Chinese, and the Koreans mixing it all together. But then, as so many thousands of years go by, we come into the age of man, sorcery, and wizardry. And what inevitably happens is the wizards learned that the dragons were susceptible to being controlled psychically through crystals. And inevitably, they knew how to challenge, channel, I'm sorry. So the wizards were starting to channel that energy through crystal balls and crystal staffs and basically hypnotize these dragons to do their bidding. And so wars began and both, both good wizards and sorcerers and bad would compete with each other. And so the dragons eventually became corrupted. So as you see in this scene, where the beginning of these, these sorcerers would start to control and command the powers of the dragon, everything started to lose its, its peacefulness and its, its majestic nobility and the dragons became these beasts that we, we seem to know now in legend and lore. So as we come around the backside, it expresses that. So in the backside we have, eventually, it's kind of a comical view of what really has happened to these dragons. They've completely been corrupted and I use the concept of the speak no evil and you notice on the snout of this dragon he's got a bandage so he can't speak. Here we have him blocking his ears. This is the hear no evil. And finally, we have the see no evil, as is he's blindfolded. But of course, hey, if he doesn't see it, it can't be bad, so he's chowing down on a night there. So this is my comedy relief side of the van. So when people come up behind and they drive, they see this at first. So here we have at the time period when the dragons are completely corrupted, and inevitably, an epic battle between good and evil was eventually gonna happen. And so on the, pass on the driver's side, that's what we have on the big panel. So come on over this side, and I can show you that. So on this side, we have the epic battle between good and evil. This is kind of like based off of the Revelation scene where you have the great apocalypse. So on this side, you have the Valkyrie holding the Sword of Truth, flaming Sword of Truth. She's riding the, basically one of the um, chromatic dragons with the purple, symbolizing the power of good and whatnot. And she's going into battle against the Reaper and all of Hellspawn. And he, she, he's riding the dragon mare. It's kind of a dragon horse. 
And as much like in Revelations, it talks about the red blood moon, the eclipse, the earthquakes, the tornadoes, all of these kinds of apocalyptic things. Here we have this big thing between good and evil going on on this side. But what you really find out is that this entire Van storyline is really just a story being read by an elder dragon out of the book called The Dragon Lord. And that is depicted over here on the driver's side. So this guy is the ancient elder dragon and he's reading a story from the book called The Dragon Lord. And as he reads, the story or the images emerge. They actually come out from the book, go behind here and actually create the scene. So it's really just a storyline that's being told by the oldest elder dragon that still exists. And again, up on front fender here, the other side, uh, this is also another elemental dragon, but it's done in a more Asi Asiatic style. So that pretty much concludes the story of the Dragon Lord. And now I'll take you to the inside. On this side, the driver's side, I went with the fire side. So we have the fire and lava dragon, so I incorporated that into the, the door panel. And also even the step ups, which are normally black plastic, these were sanded and then hand painted to look like stone. And inside we have the dash on again, the fire side, it kind of goes into the ice side. And then straight up above, I don't know if you can catch it, but the CB actually has a hand carved wood and that's a fire side and that's all hand painted. Yep, you got it. Now I'll take you over to the passenger side and we'll see the ice dragon side. Tell me when. So we're gonna go inside on the ice dragon side and show you the interior panel of that. And here we have the glacier ice dragon. And of course the ice frost skull that's also on the battery um, access panel. And once again, the step ups are hand painted to look like stone. And this is my, dri my associate and driver. He takes care of the vehicle when I'm not around, George. George, of course, gets thematically dressed uh, to fit the, the mode of the show. And this year's theme was Mad Max or Beyond Vanderdome, as we called it. And he comes complete with, of course, his own explosives. There you go. So he, he's, uh, he's my guard that makes sure nobody messes with the uh, van when uh, no one's around us. Let's get here. And now we'll take you into the main cabin. So in the main cabin, again, the step up was all hand painted, sanded down, then hand painted to look like stonework and relief. These are antique water can, oil and gas cans that I basically, I mean, you buy them at the, you know, you pick and pickers places and 15, 20 bucks, but it's cold, you know, it's all dented up and they don't want it. And then I just hand paint them to go along with the theme. And here we have our oil dragon. And the fire dragon for the gasoline. Even got his tail coming out the back. The bed in here, I'll let you go ahead on in. The bed sheet is actually my artwork that I license to different companies that do comforter sets and things like that. So I figured why not use my own art on a bed sheet as well. And it's a very comfortable, roughly queen size bed. All the artwork that you see in there that's on the walls is actually art that I've done for different games whether it was Dungeons and Dragons or sometimes the Dragon Calendar that I used to do for Barnes and Nobles and Borders. For, I did that for about 20 years. So a lot of the artwork comes from that. The walls are hand painted. My son and I built those. We steamed them, bent them. And the ceilings have little crystal reflective lights. When we turn the LEDs on, they carry it over. So it kind of gives you a little night sky effect. So under the Dragon Lord hood, we've got a modified 5.2. I actually da daily driver this. We drove this, my wife and I, to SEMA. So from Pennsylvania, all the way down 4066 into uh, SEMA this 2018, it was PPG's featured vehicle. So we do drive it. I got 87,000 miles on it. And what I did was, this is a functional hood scoop. I basically took the snorkels from the stock factory ones and cut out holes on either side of the air breather and then just connected it up. So we get a lot of nice airflow, which these engines were known for starvation for. I beefed up the cam, did a little modification to the valves, changed the transmission gears, and it gets me almost 21 miles per gallon, this giant beast. 
about 310 horse, so it's a nice, you know, it's a casual driver, but it's got plenty of kick where I need it. Um, <laughs> of course, like with all cars, whether it's Dodge or otherwise, a dragon's work is never done. And it's so true. So, as an assistant to any mechanical work that I have, I have my Dodge Dragon here, my Mopar Dragon. And you might note on his shoulder, he has the Mopar uh, tattoo. And he's working on his engine. And a little hand airbrush work here on the fuse box and whatnot. And then the final part of this whole package is the chin spoiler down below. And this, we've got just, it's, uh, this is actually produced by CustomVan.com. Kirk Cullis does this, this uh, hand fabricated um, fiberglass piece. And you've got tragedy and comedy. So the concept of the uh, two skulls given that you know, good and bad feeling again. And that just ties in the, the below the bumper. I didn't want to take this out of the street category and do any major body modifications. So it, it's just a street category. So everything is bolt on. It's just with the airbrush work, you're able, even the hood scoop, it's not molded, it's bolted on, but it gives you the ability and the feel with the airbrush that it goes along with it. A lot of people don't even realize it's a bolt on at first. And that concludes our story with the Dragon Lord Van. So anyways, if you'd like to see more of my work, you can go to airbrushbybeard.com and you'll see a whole bunch of different things. This year, 2019, I'll be at SEMA with a 55 Chevy Moonshine Runner. And um, I'll be look, working, it seems, on another van project for 2020 uh, to be at SEMA with. So stay tuned to that. <laughs>